okay so guys once again just to get you back like you know what we had done okay so see we had said when we talk about your gene cloning or your recombinant dna technology there are a few things that we are going to require so one we require tools we require instruments in that and we require biological tools that is enzymes especially okay so instruments we have already talked about like you know we talked about your pcr then we talked about your age that is agarose gel electrophoresis then today we have to talk about your biological tools then we have to talk about your cloning vectors and what are these competent cells okay so guys once again in your biological tools what have we talked about we said okay we need to know what are restriction enzymes and what are the restriction sites okay once again the restriction enzymes are what these are nothing but the enzymes which cut the dna at certain specific points what are these specific points called these specific points they are called as restriction sites okay so that is what we need to know okay chalo so but now guys let's try to move ahead let's try to see what are the biological tools okay that is the enzymes that we are going to use okay chalo so instruments is done now okay so we are going to go into your biological tools okay and now guys in your biological tools what are we talking about we said we will be talking about your enzymes okay and guys we require a lot of enzymes out over here why because see we are going to be synthesizing your dna once again okay so this is synthesis of your dna okay so let's try to see what are the different enzymes so guys the first and the foremost enzyme that you going to require is dna polymerase why because the new strand of dna is going to be brought down or synthesized by your dna polymerase guys we also require reverse transcriptase Oh, 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 reverse transcriptase. Uh -huh. Can anybody tell me reverse transcriptase? I'm damn sure you guys are done with uh, this thing, uh, the genes. And in genes, you must have spoken of reverse transcriptase, guys. Does anybody know what is this reverse transcriptase going to do? Yes, 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 guys. Anybody, anybody. guys this was the discovery of this enzyme it changed the entire central dogma okay so okay i don't know whether you know this thing or no but maybe i guess central dogma and all should be should have been done right i sure central dogma must have been done okay so guys what is the flow of information in the case of your dna guys so we have dna dna is going to give you rna rna is going to give you your proteins Okay, this is known as your central dogma. Okay, but now what happened, guys? See, DNA will give you RNA. RNA is what RNA? We are talking about your mRNA. mRNA is going to give rise to your proteins. But now, guys, with the discovery of reverse transcriptase, this entire central dogma, this was now modified to your modified central dogma. Why? Because this reverse transcriptase had the ability to convert your RNA back into your DNA, and this is reverse transcriptase. Okay, everybody getting uh, this thing, guys. Okay, so RNA to DNA reverse transcriptase, and we are going to require this thing, guys. We will be doing this. Okay, then apart from this, we have DNA ligases because. wherever you are going to see nicks and all we need to close them down and for closing we need dna ligases then we have other ones like alkaline phosphatases okay then restriction endonucleases okay lysozymes okay now why lysozymes guys sometimes because we need to break down your cell membrane cell walls basically so for that so lysozymes so etc 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 okay but now guys in this first we need to talk about your restriction endonucleases what are these restriction endonucleases and what really happens out over there okay chalo theek hai so let's try to talk about the restriction endonucleases okay okay now guys once again like i said this restriction endonucleases they are going to break down your dna at certain specific points called as your restriction sites 
okay and how are they going to break down guys they are going to break down the backbone of the dna that means they break down the phosphodiester bond okay so they break down the phosphodiester bond fine okay let's try to see what really happens out over there okay but now guys when we talk about restriction endonuclease endonuclease is actually a subset of nucleases so basically first we need to understand what are these nucleases and then we will see what is endonuclease and what is the other one exonucleus so guys we have two categories out over here in nucleases okay so basically uh, when we talk about your uh, nucleus now what is the basic idea of a nucleus as nucleus means it is going to break down your nucleic acids so whether you put a dna and now dna is is the nucleus so if you put down dna and in that you add dna it is going to break down your dna now you have rna you add rna is inside of it it is going to break down your rna these are your nucleases guys okay so we have two types of nucleases endonuclease and we have exonuclease okay but now what is the difference between the two let's try to see so guys let's imagine we have your dna strand something like this okay here there are all going to be your uh, this thing okay they are going to be your sequences the nitrogen bases and all that atgc 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 atga okay whatever it is now what happens in the case of your endonuclease guys in the case of endonuclease now you're going to see that see this restriction endonuclease this is going to come and now it is going to recognize a site a restriction site in between this dna somewhere out over here okay so it recognizes the site and now what it does yeah kacha 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 okay it is going to cut it down in the center and because of this when it cuts down in the center guys what are we going to see we are going to get two different parts like this okay and this is the most widely used in biotechnology guys most widely used in biotechnology okay but now guys on the other hand we have others others that are exonuclease now exonuclease see endo meaning what within so it is what was cutting the dna within but exonuclease guys on the other hand you are going to see that this exonuclease guys this is going to come just a second just a second Okay. So, now, so now, what are these exonucleases going to do? See, guys, exonucleases they are going to identify only the ends, and they are going to cut only the ends out over here. So it may work out over here. It may work out over here, and it may work out over here. So this can come, and it can break. But now, guys, what happens is, see, in this, it is cutting only the exterior parts, right? Is this going to be of any use to us? No. Why? You know, because see, in your biotechnology, guys, what we need to do, we need to insert a sequence of DNA in between. the two strands so idhar abhi karne ko gaya to idhar your dna will come but where is the other end you know you cannot you know fix it out over here so the easiest way guys you are going to see uh, slowly slowly you will understand that guys okay slowly slowly when we move ahead okay so here like but now 
guys, when we have this thing, you can insert a piece of DNA. Okay, just a minute, just a minute. okay so now see here but now in biotechnology see what we can do is we can add a piece of dna out over here and now we can take this entire dna and now we can put it into uh you know into the cell and that is why we especially go for this thing guys okay anyways but now guys let's try to see this thing okay so i hope everybody has understood why we will go for the first one and why we will not go for the second one if you want i can just once again explain you like you know uh, is everyone okay why we'll go for endonucleases just quickly tell me yes or no guys in the chat box okay okay fine okay i will explain it again okay see what is the general idea i'll just give you okay one second see what happens is let's imagine you have a cell okay and from this cell you have a nucleus and you have this chromatin fiber chromatin fiber is going to contain your dna so let's assume from here okay so let's say we have this dna okay now here this is the gene of your interest let's imagine this now what are we going to do we by using restriction enzymes we are going to remove this portion of your dna okay so now once we have removed this portion of this dna our gene let's say this is our insulin gene insulin gene has come up now what are we going to do okay we are going to take plasmid okay so now see we are going to take plasmid like this and we have to put it into the plasmid now guys if if by any chance we had exonuclease, exonuclease would work only on one place like this. What would have happened? This entire plasmid would have become straightened like this. Will this be of any use to us? No. I want this thing to be in circular format only. Like it, just to make you understand. Okay, not in the literal sense, but just to make you understand. So now what we do, guys, is see, you are going to have this plasmid. Where do I get this plasmid from? I get it from your uh, bacteria. Okay. So there are various plasmids, but this is like, you know, from the bacteria. Okay. Now, one second, what am I going to do? I am going to make use of these restriction endonuclease. So restriction endonuclease, see, they are going to act in between at some point, let's say either, let's say either. Okay. So they are going to act at these points. Okay. Restriction endonucleases, we also call this thing as REN, restriction endonucleases. Okay, now what is going to happen? See, because they have acted upon here in the next case. Okay, so I'll just show this entire region. Now what is going to happen? You are going to see that that entire region is now going to be removed off. Okay, that part which was there, okay, that is going to be removed off. Okay, so ye bahar nikal gaya because we have made use of those restriction endonucleases. Now, what are we going to do? See, to complete this entire circle, now we take this DNA, the gene of our interest, and we put it uh, right in between out over here, like this. And now, the moment it is out over here, see, once again, we have got our recombinant DNA. Once we have got this recombinant DNA, now what are we going to do? We are just going to take this, and now we are going to put it into your E. coli. The moment we put it into your E. coli, now you are going to see that this E. coli will start producing the gene of your, I mean, the product of your interest. So, see, sorry.
Okay, so see, this has gone out over here. E. coli is going to have its own DNA, okay, which is once again a circular DNA, so like this. And now this E. coli is capable of producing its own product, meaning that is the DNA from or like the human cell, whatever we had removed. So this was insulin gene. So now this produces insulin. That is how it is going to be. Okay, everybody got this thing? Sure. Now is everybody clear? Why we are using only restriction endonucleases? Why we are not using exonucleases? Okay, fine. Chal. Okay, but now out over here, okay. Now what happens, guys? Who was the first person to ever really work on these restriction endonucleases? Now, how was the discovery done? Like, you know, oh, there are restriction endonucleases and they work and, you know, they do something like, you know, they are going to break down the DNA. So, guys, we have the first people to ever report this thing. Their names were Arbor and Lin. So, we have Arbor and Lin. Okay, and what were these Arbor and Lin working upon? They were working upon E. coli. Now, guys, remember E. coli is the most beautifully studied microorganism ever. We know everything about E. coli, each and every aspect of its life, each and every aspect of its life cycle, reproduction, everything. The most widely studied bacteria ever. Okay, so we got this E. coli and now, along with this, they were working on this bacteriophage. Okay, now, okay, bacteriophage. Now, guys, do you know what is a bacteriophage? I'm sure you must have done this thing. Okay, living world and in the first, you know, this thing. Can anybody tell me what is a bacteriophage, guys? Guys, quickly, quickly, quickly. We have to go into the details of this thing. So I don't know if you know this thing, then I will explain. If you know, if you don't know this, then I'll have to explain. Yes, yes, very nice, very nice, Parnavi, very nice, Viva. Yes, okay. So guys, basically, no, 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 no. It's the other way around, Devan. So guys, basically, let's understand what does this term actually mean. Bacterio meaning bacteria. Okay. Now, Paj means what? Paj means eating. So this is bacteria eating what? Bacteria eating virus, guys. Okay. So remember, this is a bacteriophage, meaning a bacteria eating virus. Phage means to, phage comes from the Greek term phagin, and phagin means to eat. So this is bacteria eating virus. So now, guys, what they were doing in this thing? Okay. They were trying to infect this E. coli by this bacteriophage. Okay. Let me just give you an idea. What were they trying to do? Okay, so let's say this is your E. coli. Okay, now generally, okay, what does this thing do? Okay, let me just give you an idea. Okay, so quickly, this is your E. coli DNA. Now what happens, we are going to take our bacteriophage. How is this bacteriophage? The bacteriophage is like this. We say this is a tadpole-shaped bacteria, uh, bacteriophage. Okay, that is a virus. Okay, inside this, it has its own DNA. So let's say this is its own DNA. Okay, so something of this sort, guys. Let me just copy this thing. Ah. So now what happens, guys? See, first thing is he is going to be something of this sort. Now, the moment he sees that, oh, there is a virus out over here, the bacteriophage, they cannot move and all. They wait for chance encounters to happen. Okay, so now what is going to happen? After this, you will see that they are going to move here and there, here and there, and then finally they are going to land up onto your uh, the E. coli. So in the next case, now guys, let So let's see. Now this has landed up out over here. In the next case, guys, what is this going to do? It injects its DNA, okay, into the E. coli. So now you're going to see that, okay, this is how it is. And now this thing, it just sits on top of it. Okay, and now whatever DNA it has, see, it has injected. It has injected into the E. coli. And see this head, whatever that is there, guys, that is now going to be empty. So DNA. DNA has gone into the E. coli. 
Now the remaining part that is there, guys, because it has nothing, we call it as the ghost. Okay, but uh, I'm sure you must have done this thing in the genes chapter. <clears throat> okay, now what happens, guys? The moment we have a situation like this, now you will see that oh, okay, now this viral DNA, guys, what is this viral DNA going to do? The viral DNA is now going to start preparing multiple copies of itself. Meaning this is going to hijack this entire cell. And now rather than the cell making its own protein, it starts producing the viral protein. So let's say the DNA has been replicated and the viral particles are also going to be replicated. In the next case, guys, what is going to happen? You are going to see that, oh, this E. coli has become a slave. Okay, this virus has pirated this thing. Now you are going to see that inside, it is now going to have, it is going to develop these baby virions. Okay, so you will have all these baby virions coming. And now in the next case, guys, these baby virions, they are now going to burst this entire E. coli and then they are going to just ooze out. This is the entire lytic cycle. Okay, lytic and light staining cycle, you must have you know, done but I'm just explaining so that, you know, I'm sure from my end, I have explained it out to you. Okay, so now you are going to see that, oh, 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 oh okay, these are like, you know, dupo, dupo, they are just going to rush out. And now what are they going to go do instead, guys? They are going to go and they are going to infect all the other neighboring cells. That is their job. Like this. Okay, so this is the life cycle of a back, uh, your bacteriophage. Everybody okay with this thing? What is happening out over here? Okay, now let me just tell you what happens okay, to the bacterial DNA. Now always remember guys, see, when this is going to be infected, okay, and now, you know, the viral DNA is multiplying, slowly, slowly you will see that this bacterial DNA, whatever that was there, this is going to be broken off in the next case see this has been like completely broken off that way so it is going to be removed off and then this entire set the control is going to be taken by your virus okay so i'll just mention out over here the viral dna takes control okay and here the bacterial dna is broken down Okay, so basically, guys, this is what they were trying to do. So they had the bacteriophage and they wanted to infect this E. coli cell. Okay, so that, you know, they would create more bacteriophages like this. But now, what did they find out? Guys, they found out that this E. coli that they were working upon, it was not getting infected at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Let's try to see. So what happened? Okay. So they were trying to infect E. coli. Okay. But now uh, E. coli with your bacteriophage. Okay? So that was the entire experiment. Okay. But now what happened was, but... But it was, the E. coli was not getting infected. The E. coli was not getting infected at all. So, what they were doing is, they were thinking that, oh my God, there is some problem with the E. coli. Like, you know, why is it not being infected? Because all throughout their entire experiments, it was happening with other, other E. coli varieties. So, they said that, okay, let's try to analyze this E. coli. So they opened up this E. coli and then they found out that E. coli has an enzyme. Okay, E. coli has an enzyme which broke down your viral DNA. Okay, so it had certain enzyme which broke down the viral DNA. So this was like a defense mechanism for E. coli. 
and now guys this that certain enzyme which was breaking down the viral dna what is this this is nothing but your restriction endonucleus okay so let's try to see what happened out over there in their experiment okay so now see this was the left hand side is the normal thing what they were trying to do let's try to see so you had the bacteria the e coli e coli has its own dna okay on top of that they took uh, this thing they try to infect it the moment they infected this you will see in the next case this was the situation the viral dna was entering in, uh, into your e coli but now the moment the situation was something like this guys what happened now this is very important so let's imagine okay Okay, so now guys, let's say this entire DNA has gone inside. Okay, so this is empty now. Okay, the entire DNA is inside. Okay, but now what happened was the moment this E. coli recognized that, oh, this viral DNA has entered into it, guys, now what happened? Immediately, this portion, let's say this portion of the viral DNA, it produced an enzyme. Okay. And that enzyme, guys, let's say it is this enzyme. Okay. So this portion of the DNA produced the enzyme. This enzyme, it came out over here and it said that, oh, okay, this is the DNA, the viral DNA, whatever that is there. And kapak, in the next case, you saw that the same thing, it broke it down. Okay, so in the next case, guys, this was broken down. So, one moment, I'll just. This viral DNA was broken down into pieces like that. Okay, so now, guys, uh, what happened? Now, if the viral DNA is broken down, will this E. coli ever be infected by this bacteriophage? No, that bacteriophage is away. Okay, so this is what happened, guys. So let me just once again just put it down out over here. So this enzyme which is produced, okay, so E. coli produces an enzyme which breaks down viral DNA into smaller pieces into fragments and once this is done it is going to be useless okay and protects the e coli from infection okay this is what is going to happen and guys what is this enzyme this enzyme or whatever <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry 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 this enzyme whatever we are talking about this is nothing but your restriction enzyme or restriction endonuclease. Okay, restriction enzyme or your restriction endonuclease. Okay, but now guys, we need to know what are some of the examples of this restriction endonuclease. But before we move ahead, Is everybody okay with what has happened out over here? Guys, just have a look. Is everybody okay? Quickly, 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 guys. Just tell me yes or no. Okay. Okay, chalo. So, guys, let's try to move ahead. Okay, so now what happens? Let's try to see. Okay, so now, guys, what are these restriction endonucleases? You know, what is exactly happening out over here? You know, who are they exactly? And what are some examples that we need to see? 
ओके चलो सो गाइज द टू मोस्ट ब्यूटिफुल एग्जाम्पल्स दैट वी एवर हैव इज फर्स्ट वन ओके द फर्स्ट वन आई विल जस्ट शो यू we call this thing as eco ri okay so we have eco and we have ri and now this i is actually a roman one okay so let's try to understand what is this okay so basically let me just once again put it down eco r i so basically eco guys eco comes from where this restriction endonuclease was discovered so this was discovered in escherichia coli okay so escherichia co is for the coli okay so okay so basically escherichia is what guys escherichia is going to be the genus coli is going to be your species okay so genus and species now what is r r actually stands for strain okay so this is strain but now guys what is the strain the strain was ry13 okay so the strain is ry13 so from the strain they took r and the last one okay we are going to have i what is i this is roman number 1 okay this is roman number 1 okay what does it mean this is first to be discovered this is how we label uh, these things okay your a restriction endonucleases okay let's see another example guys we have hind 3 okay so let's try to see what is this hind 3 going to be okay so now first of all guys h h is going to be for hemophilus okay so hemophilus in is for your influenza okay hemophilus influenza hemophilus influenza d stands for your strain okay but now what is the strain out over here this strain is rd strain rd and finally guys what is this number 3 3 is third to be discovered number of discovering so this is 3 that's it that is what we need to know with regards to your restriction endonucleases okay everybody okay with this fine now always remember guys in your exams they will ask you okay what do, uh, what do you understand by uh, hind 3 or what do you understand by eco ri so you have to label all these things another question they will ask you is uh write about the different methods of naming or labeling your restriction endonucleases okay so once again this is the same thing you will you are going to put down okay but now let's try to see how do they work okay okay so i had already shown you like you know how they are going to work but then let's try to go a little bit into the details how do they work and then here we are going to see some very important examples okay which you will have to remember some how or the other okay so once again i said guys we are going to have our dna our dna is going to be something like this and in between this we said there are going to be specific sequences of your nucleotides which the restriction endonuclease is going to recognize okay r e n restriction endonuclease or restriction enzyme okay so now let's imagine we have these rens the restriction endonucleases or restriction enzymes okay these rens they are going to come over here and then recognize and these small sites which they recognize what are these these are our restriction endonu uh, restriction sites so what are these guys basically these are nothing but small sequences of nucleotide okay small sequences of nucleotides 
these are restriction sites and this is the second thing that we need to know okay so first word your restriction enzymes or restriction endonucleases this is the the second thing restriction site but now guys when we talk about this restriction site how big are they going to be are they going to be 1000 bases are they going to be 2000 bases no 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 they are going to be really really small meaning they are just going to be 4 to 8 bases meaning 4 to 8 nucleotides long okay so just really really small okay four to eight nucleotides long and guys generally what do we call these sites these sites they are known as palindromes okay palindromes now guys palindromes are those letters those words basically which you read from left to right and right to left they read the same for example we have mom you read it left to right mom right to left mom let's say you have dad left to right dad right to left dad let's say we have malayalam malayalam okay so left to right malayalam right to left malayalam okay so guys this is how it is going to work okay Yes, like wow. Yes, very nice. Very nice, Devang, Komal. Yes. So, just a moment. Okay, so now guys, this is how your restriction endonucleases or restriction enzymes work. Okay, so they will always recognize the restriction sites. Okay, so now let's try to figure this thing out with the help of an example. Okay, so who are we going to talk about? So we'll talk about your eco RI only. Okay, so now what is this eco RI going to do? So eco RI, this is going to recognize the sequence. Now, how is the sequence? Let's try to see. And guys, this example you need to remember because you have to put this thing down in your answer. Okay, so what is this uh, sequence? The sequence is G A A T T C. G-A-A-T-T-C. So guys, see if on one strand it is going to be G-A-A-T-T-C, how is it going to appear onto the other strand? So let's try to see this thing. Okay. See, on the other strand, now let's try to see. So if this is G, this is going to be C. If this is A, this is going to be T, A, T, T, A, T, A, C, G. So now, guys, let's try to read. So whether it is from 5 dash to 3 dash or 3 dash uh, or 5 dash to 3 dash. Okay. So you read it in any of the manner, guys. So see, if from left to right, G A A T T C. From right to left, G A A T T C. See, the sequence remains the same. Everybody getting the hang of this thing, guys. So now what happens is the moment we have a sequence like this, now E. coli, this, this E. co ri, okay, this is going to come and now it is going to start cutting down the DNA at that part. But where exactly is it going to cut and what is going to happen? Let's try to figure this thing out. So guys, the moment we have this E. co ri, okay, so let's say this E. co ri, now the moment it sees, oh, G -A -T -T -G -A -T -T -C. okay, okay, chalo, chalo. now cutting, karna hai. 
Okay, so now what happens is this is going to cut. Now I told you what is this going to do? This is going to cut down the phosphodiester bonds. So this is going to come over here and it breaks out over here at this point and it is going to break it at this point. Okay, so if you are able to see, okay, I will show you what is going to happen. Okay, so this is going to cut at these positions. Okay, fine. Now, let's just try to visualize what has just happened. You are going to see that, okay, here it has been broken down in this fashion. Okay, I'm just giving you a way to see this thing, guys. Here it was G A. A T T C. One minute, one minute. Thoda sa space sort karna chahiye. Okay, so okay, G A A T T C. And here it was. Thoda sa under. Okay, G A A T T C. So see guys, this is how it is going to be cut. So now if I see, see you are going to get a jigsaw puzzle like this, where you have two ends which are going to fit into one another. Everybody is getting the hang of this thing guys. Okay, so now let me just show you what happens. Okay, so now let's say i am separating these two things so you are going to get two fragments of that puzzle okay so one is this fragment and the another one is this fragment okay so like this okay so here we said we are going to have g c k t a a and here it is a a t t c g this way so guys this is how we are going to get Everybody okay with this thing? Is everybody getting the hang of this thing, guys? Okay. So, now what happens, guys? You are going to see that these, the way this has been cut, these ends, we call them as sticky ends. Okay. There are three different types of uh, this thing. Okay. One, we call these kinds of ends as sticky ends or these are also known as overhanging ends. Okay, why? Because see, this part is actually overhanging. And guys, this part will always annul with this part. Okay, so this is why, you know, we call them as your overhanging ends or your sticky ends. Now, there are, this is one type of cut. But guys, there are many other types of cuts. So, let's say we have second one, which is called as a staggered cut. Okay, now how is this staggered cut? Okay, staggered cut or your staggered ends. Okay, whatever you like to call it. Guys, in this thing, what you will see is rather than producing these straight lines, you are going to see various varieties of it. Okay, so you will get some different like this. So one thing would be like this. Another one would be something of this sort. So that way. So this kind of a cut, it is going to be a staggered cut because it does not have a plane, this thing. Okay, it has like, you know, zigzag, 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 zigzag. This is called as a staggered cut. And guys, the third one, which we don't use, okay, which we don't want actually, is your blunt ends. This is the kind of cut we will never want. Okay, why? Because you cannot actually adjust anything into the between part. Okay, so you don't want actually these ends. What you will always go for? The sticky ends. Okay, now the sticky ends and sticky ends. Oh, okay, so the sticky ends. Okay. This is the most important thing, guys. Okay. So, this is how your entire restriction endonuclease is going to work. And a restriction endonuclease uh, and restriction sites. But now, guys, let me just give you okay, one more small thing. There's a one table which I have, like, you know, removed it from your textbook itself. 
which gives you a list of other restriction endonucleases and how it cuts okay so the first one guys this is your allu okay allu1 allu1 basically restriction enzyme this was obtained from arthrobacter luteus and guys what is the sequence agct simple agct four uh, nucleotides long okay so where is this going to cut uh, right in the center guys so see in the recognition sequence we have these arrows so see you get one blunt cut and another one is also your blunt cut okay second one guys we have bam h1 very important guys keep this thing in mind okay bam h1 bacillus amyloliquefaciens h okay bacillus amyloliquefaciens h okay let's try to see what is the sequence g g a t c c okay g g a t c c okay and once again how is it cutting just like how we had your eco r i okay so one and one out over here one base one base so you will see once again sticky ends okay next one third one we have eco r i which we have said g a a t t c okay so uh that is once again you know after your first base so once again sticky ends and last one guys we have hind 2 hind 2 once again hind 2 just like you know how we have hind 3 same way hind 2 hemophilus influenzae strain rd okay and now how is this gtc gac once again where is it going to cut right in the center what kind of a cut we are going to get blunt ends like this so guys these are some of the strains uh, from which restriction various restriction enzymes have been obtained and these are the recognition sequences the restriction sites in your exams okay as far uh, are sticky ends always of the same design yes 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 they are going to be of the same type yes now guys in your exams like as far as 12th standard is concerned okay they generally won't ask you this thing like you know what is the recognition sequence and all but for your neat exam guys you need to know this properly okay so you have to keep it in mind all these sequences guys okay everybody all right with this okay now let's try to see the next thing guys what molasses scroll down okay 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 i thought where have i put down molasses okay just have a look guys just see if everybody is okay understand what has happened okay everybody <clears throat> all right with this fine no problem okay chalo so guys now the next thing that we need to know is okay so guys see i am saying that there are these sequences okay g a a t t c but now this g a t t c sequence is going to be on your e coli dna also so how is it that the cell is going to make sure that its dna is not going to be broken down and only the dna of the viral particle has is going to be broken down 
see there has to be some mechanism so let me just you know make you understand what is this okay so this is very very important okay so let's imagine we have our you know this is your e coli okay so let me just draw an e coli only okay so let's say we have this e coli guys and in this e coli we have g a a t t c okay let's out over here g a a are we let's say g a a t t c let's say g a a t t c right so the sequences are out over here also right because these sequences can keep on repeating any time now let's imagine guys we have this viral dna that viral dna has entered out over here and this viral dna <clears throat> okay <clears throat> this also has g a a t t c now guys what is this restriction endonuclease is going to do now i told you okay so let me just one second i'll just copy this things because i require it okay so now guys let's imagine we have this restriction endonuclease e co r i okay now the moment it would have been see what am i saying just try to understand see if this e co r i does not know how to differentiate between what is your own dna and what is the foreign dna it is going to just come down and it is just going to cleave everywhere so it is going to break it down over here okay so this is going to come it is going to break down out over here it is also going to come it is going to break down over here this is also going to come and it is going to break down out over here and the same way this is also going to come and this is going to break down the dna out over here as well right so what is going to happen ultimately if this works this way guys you you are going to have the bacterial dna this is also going to be broken down right and this dna which we wanted to break it down okay so this was broken down so if this breaks that is fine but your own dna it should not break down right otherwise the cell is not going to survive the cell will die so here guys we need to know one thing the cell always knows okay which dna to cut and which not to okay so there should be some mechanism and how is this the cell always brings about methylation the cell always brings about methylation of its own dna okay and this it prevents the breakdown by its own restriction endonuclease okay so now let's try to see what is the situation how is it going to be prevented so guys see we had the situation like this guys so now rather than this thing what are you going to see you are going to see there is methylation so methylation so meaning uh, you know uh, methyl residues they are going to be added out over here now what happens when this thing is going to come the restricted enzyme is going to come uh oh just a moment just a moment just a moment
Okay, so now guys, because we have methylated, okay, we have methylated uh, this thing, DNA. Now, when this comes out over here, it checks that, oh, oh my God, this is methylation. So this means it is ours. It comes over here, it checks this thing. It comes over here, it checks this thing. But now here, guys, when it comes out over here, is this going to be methylated? No. So because this is non-methylated, okay, because this is non-methylated, it recognizes it and immediately it is going to cut it down. Okay, everybody all right with this thing? And here, in the other case, guys, here, this thing, it recognizes methylation. And therefore, doesn't cut it. That's it. That is what we need to know with how these restriction endonucleases recognize which DNA to cut, which not to cut, and so on and so forth. Okay, everybody has got this part, guys. Sure, no problem. Okay. So, the next thing, guys, we are going to talk about is what are the different types of your restriction endonuclease. Now, we have said, okay, so these are all restriction endonucleases. This is how they are going to work. But let's try to see how many types. Okay, so let's try to see what are the different types of restriction endonucleases. Okay, now guys, in our entire biotechnology, we generally have three different types of the restriction endonucleases. So we have type 1, we have type 2, and we have type 3. Now guys, most probably, okay, most probably the ones which are going to use in biotechnology, these are going to be the type 2 ones, okay, because this is the most important and these are exactly what they are going to give us, okay, you will slowly, slowly understand. So guys, the type 1 restriction endonucleases, what are these, okay, these are the ones, they are going to act as both, okay, let's try to see, they are going to act as both, they simultaneously Okay, so okay, so simultaneously act as endonucleus and methylase. Okay, so both the activities they are going to be done through this thing only. Okay, that one basic one uh, enzyme only. A most common example of this, we have ECOK. But now the problem with this is, this is very, very less stable. Okay, fine. Now, coming to our the most loved, uh, you know, type 2 restriction endonucleases. Okay, so these are most important and these are going to be, you know, used widely in biotechnology. Okay, and the reason now, slowly you will get it, okay? The reason for this is, guys, first thing, this is going to be more stable. Unlike your type 1, these are more stable. And second thing that is there is, guys, these are going to have separate, meaning the same thing is not going to recognize two different things. It is not going to do two different jobs. This has separate endonuclease activity. and separate methylase activity so guys see if you are doing the two jobs at the same time your efficiency is going to be less here because two jobs are given to two different <coughs> two different sequences guys because of this their activity is more okay and that is why we will going to be we are going to be using this one example of this thing guys we have our eco ri okay now, once again, what is the most important characteristic of these guys? These always cut at palindromes and not at any random sequences. Okay, but now, till today, 
we have recognized more than 100 okay more than 100 restriction sites okay guys keep this number in your mind okay we have recognized more than 100 restriction sites and second we have discovered more than 350 more than 350 different types of your type 2 restriction endonucleases identified and in our day to day you know biotechnology guys we are going to be using these ones only okay and then the third thing guys the third thing that is your type 3 this is what we really don't want at all guys because this they cut the dna at any site meaning that non non palindromic sites or sequences okay so because of this was to control these things it becomes a, a little difficult okay and what is the example for this it is your mpo2 this is it so guys this is all what we needed to know with regards to your restriction endonucleases okay everyone all right with this fine so guys what we'll do is we'll break over for 5 minutes and then we'll start with the next part that is cloning vectors okay so with this we are done with the first thing that is the tools in tools containing instruments and enzymes second we have cloning vectors and third the next one okay fine chal so guys just have a look at this thing and until then we'll take a short break 5 minutes and then we'll come back okay only 5 minutes guys uh someone wanted some diagram yes uh, can you tell me which diagram you want this one or the this one okay
Uh, okay, so guys, there is a question. Restriction endonucleases are only for DNA protection? Yes, traditionally, yes, they were produced so that, you know, to pro prevent any kind of infection from viruses and all. But now we have exploited their use so that, you know, we can cut the DNA according to our choices. What is the purpose of cutting into st uh, sticky, staggered and blunt ends so that we can put our choice of DNA into it? that way so let me just show you once again okay so see when we talked about this thing see when i said 
you know i put the dna into this thing so how it was actually you know here we were not having blunt cuts okay here i have do i have shown blunt cuts it is not actually blunt cut you are going to see that see it is going to be something like this and this is going to be something like this and what we are going to do is we are going to cut our dna exactly in that opposite fashion and that dna is going to fit out over here like this like a puzzle so this way so this is why we require those overhanging ends or those sticky ends like this it is for this reason why are we doing this so that we can keep uh, you know whatever dna of our choice into this plasmid and by taking this plasmid we put it into your bacteria so that the bacteria will produce the product of our interest that is why we are doing this and that is why you know first i explained to you the entire process like why are we you know looking at this why are we doing this why is happening otherwise you know we are going to be completely lost if you just look at the textbook they have just started you know talking about any random stuff without even knowing like you know without even you know describing what is the actual purpose that way anyways chalo so let's try to move ahead guys and let's try to see the next part okay the next thing that we are going to see are your cloning vectors okay so guys cloning vectors i told you cloning vectors see what is a vector vector is just like your auto rickshaw okay so this is going to just carry you from one place to another that's it so the same way guys this vectors these are going to help to transfer segments of dna okay and now because of this because they are transferring guys we call them as vehicle dna okay very very important thing but now what are the examples of this vehicle dna or your vectors so first thing is our plasmids okay so let's try to see what are these plasmids so once again guys the circular things that we were talking about until now those are plasmids what are the examples examples are like puck 19 we have tbr 322 okay we will talk about this thing okay these are some some names that we are going to give it then second thing just like plasmids we have bacteriophages okay now what we will do we will take the gene of our interest and we will put it into the bacteriophage and now we will leave this bacteriophage so that it can infect certain cells so for example we have m13 we have lambda phage Okay, M thirteen lambda patch. Okay, fine. Let's try to see next. Apart from this, we have cosmids. Cosmids are obtained from bacteriophage DNAs only. Okay, how we will see it a little later. Then we are going to have something on the similar lines. We have phagmids. Okay, then next, these are very important. Yak plasmid. Yak plasmid. These are yeast artificial chromosomes. yeast artificial chromosome okay and next one just like this we have mac yak and mac this is mammalian artificial chromosome okay then guys so this is for yeast which is like a fungus this is for your mammalian mammals but now guys for your plants we have ti plasmid okay tumor inducing plasmid this is for plants okay obtained from your agrobacterium tumefaciens and the last one guys i will give you this is baculovirus this baculovirus this is the one which we are going to use to infect your insects so that way so acha i ye nahi dalta brackets nahi dalta okay so ti plasmid this is going to be used to infect plants and baculovirus this is used to infect insects okay so that is how it is going to be okay once again guys you know let me just show you how this entire thing is so guys let me just quickly show you a picture okay so guys see this is how your plasmids are going to look like okay we have drawn them several times so you know this thing
okay but now in order to be classified as a successful plasmid okay what are the different things that are necessary so let's try to see what are the important points of a plasmid okay and guys once again i want your entire attention out over here okay chal let's imagine guys okay we have this plasmid and i want to use this plasmid for your transferring your gene of interest let's say insulin gene into your e coli how will i use this thing and how will i know that okay this can be used for my experiment that is the idea so the first thing guys we are going to see is the important points okay important points of plasmid okay so these are some essential features that we are going to require okay without this the plasmid cannot function only okay so the first thing guys the first one we have something that is called as ori or this is known as origin of replication okay origin of replication see every uh, you know every plasmid needs to have an ori so if the ori is present then only this plasmid can be re reproduced okay otherwise what will happen is there will be no reproduction then that plasmid is of no use okay fine second thing is guys we require certain thing called as the marker gene okay so marker gene this is going to mark that okay for some reason this plasmid has entered into a cell i, I will tell you what is this okay let me just first put down the points then i will explain it after you next thing is we require one antibiotic antibiotic resistance genes okay antibiotic resistance gene okay fine next thing we are going to require <clears throat> your restriction endonucleases okay restriction endonuclease meaning restriction sites okay theek hai next we are going to have <clears throat> a gene of interest and finally guys we are going to <clears throat> have some control elements okay now control elements basically they are going to okay these are going to help increase the production stop the production something of that sort okay so basically these control elements these are nothing but they are going to be your promoters okay or these are going to be your operators promoters operators now you must have seen these kinds of thing in your operon operon models so something of this sort okay control elements promoters operators etc okay but now what are these what is the importance of this why are we having this thing so let's try to see first of all guys let me just show you a quick plasmid map how this you know plasmid map is going to be like so see whatever we are saying okay all those things are going to be out over here in this thing okay so promoter region basically this is the one which is going to make sure ki abhi idhar se hum log ko replication karna hai okay basically that is you have the promoter region is going to be okay so it is going to help you uh, replicate this entire sequence first thing guys origin of replication so right out over here we are having origin of replication what does this tell you that okay yes this plasmid can be reproduced meaning it, this can be produced copies of this can be produced again and again again and again again and again that way second thing we are going to have antibiotic resistance gene antibiotic resistance gene because you know what when we are going to put it in, like into your e coli let's say you know you have taken e coli you have put it into e coli are pata kaise chalega kaun se plasmid mein the gene of interest is there kaun se plasmid mein gene of interest is not there so for that we require this thing okay so just like that we have antibiotic resistance gene we have this selectable marker gene okay that is the marker basically marker gene same way i'll just explain you guys as we move ahead you'll understand 
ठीक है प्रोमोटर रीजन दिस इज गोइंग टू मेक श्योर दिस थिंग इज गोइंग टू बी रेप्लिकेटेड एंड द जीन इज गोइंग टू बी प्रोड्यूस्ड देन वी आर गोइंग टू हैव रिस्ट्रिक्शन साइट्स आउट ओवर हियर सो सी हियर द रिस्ट्रिक्शन साइट सो वी कैन कट द प्लाज्मिड फ्रॉम दिस पार्ट एंड वी कैन पुट द जीन ऑफ इंटरेस्ट इन इट्स प्लेस ओके सो दिस आर नथिंग बट द डिफरेंट एलिमेंट्स दैट वी आर गोइंग टू हैव सो इफ यू वांट सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट वन this is the marker gene this is the second one that we have set out over here antibiotic resistance gene third restriction sites these are four and four okay then gene of interest this is five and control elements that is promoter this is six okay so this is how it is going to be okay fine now okay now guys please i want your entire attention okay otherwise this is not going to work it is interest or inserted interest gene of interest matlab it can be uh, you know gene of interest can be it can be insulin gene it can be uh, you know it can be any kind of your you know maybe your hormonal gene or it can be any kind of your proteins okay here inserted gene is nothing but the inserted gene of interest that way hey this is gene of interest okay so now let's try to understand guys why are we going to go for this marker gene why are we going to go for this antibiotic resistance gene okay so okay first just have a look at this thing then i will quickly explain guys just have a look at this yeah we will see we we have to explain i am going to explain everything out over here first just understand the map how it is generally going to be okay okay so let's try to understand guys what exactly happens okay so now first thing we are going to talk about your resistance gene okay see origin of replication why is this this can be recognized in any cell okay that is why this is important that is why it is important okay but now on the other side guys let's try to see what is the importance of this resistance gene okay so for example guys let's imagine we have this thing okay so we had said okay this was your antibiotic resistant gene so let's say this is your ampicillin gene okay ampicillin resistance gene ampicillin is basically your uh, you know one of the antibiotics so guys let's imagine you have taken this and you have put it into your e coli okay let's imagine this entire chain it goes into your e coli <clears throat> okay so <clears throat> okay so now <clears throat> e e coli has its own dna and now suddenly it has got this ampicillin resistance gene now guys because this is ampicillin resistant gene what will this do this will not allow the bacteria to be killed in the presence of ampicillin meaning even if you take antibiotic this will continue to grow so guys now what we do is see 
<clears throat> when you are working with bacteria you cannot see with your naked eyes that oh you know you know that you know uh, that plasmid has been taken by this cell and it has not been taken by this cell so let's say you are working with an entire solution okay so let's say see what you are going to see when you are experimenting you are going to see only this test tube okay and in this test tube you are going to bring about all these reactions and all okay now in this there are going to be millions and millions of bacteria millions and millions of bacteria and only few of them only few of them are going to take this plasmid <clears throat> how are you going to identify this thing from a population of these so i need to have a method so let's imagine okay now let's say what we do is we take these bacteria and we are going to put it on to media media is what once again it is food for your bacteria so i am going to take this thing and i am going to put it on your normal plate meaning containing normal media i will show you what is the result okay so the result is going to be so you are going to have this plate okay and now on this plate you are going to see all the bacteria they are going to grow all e coli they are growing like this okay now if everyone is growing like this how are you really going to identify who has taken this you know the ampicillin resistance gene meaning who has taken this plasmid and who has not you know this is going to be a challenge so what do we do guys now let's try to see by uh, i will just take the same thing guys okay and i am just copying this thing so that i'll show you what we do okay so now guys what we are going to do is now see i know if these bacteria have received this plasmid and if the plasmid is for ampicillin resistance then these bacteria won't die in the presence of ampicillin so what do i do i am going to take a medium that is the same medium okay and plus to that now i add ampicillin okay now see the normal e coli okay so normal e coli they were just like this okay so the normal e coli they were just like this did they have that <clears throat> did they have that uh, plasmid to give them protection from uh, ampicillin no right so now what happens guys when we take the same thing and now when you plate it like when you take this solution and you plate it onto the medium guys what are you going to see you are going to see that see how everybody had grown out over here because this was a normal medium here it is not going to be so here all the normal e coli will they survive no you will not see them survive guys now what are you going to see you are going to see that only a few of them only a few of them will survive like this okay and now if they are surviving what can i say i can definitely say that oh these are the cells okay these are the cells they have picked up these are the cells who have picked up the plasmid everybody getting this thing so i can easily identify this that is why we require one your antibiotic resistance gene but then what about marker gene now guys marker gene is very very important now actually you don't have this thing in detail but this is like really really interesting stuff okay now why do we need a marker gene a marker gene is the one which is going to give you a visual aid like this is going to give you a color or this can give you like you know some kind of uh, like you know product which can identify your cell from the rest of them so for example now let's say okay so we had taken the same plasmid and the plasmid now instead of this okay now we are focusing on the marker gene so let's see this marker gene this gives color okay this is responsible for some color okay so let's say this is going to give us orange color now what happens when this one see once again when you are going to do the experiment you are going to do it in your test tube and when you do this thing in your test tube you are not going to know for sure which one is going to are we okay which one is going to have uh, the gene of interest which one is going to have the plasmid so now let's imagine this was the one with the plasmid 
and this is your normal e coli dna but now the moment it has this plasmid this plasmid will give color once again guys let's try to see you are going to have a test tube this test tube is going to contain this solution okay where you're going to have all the e coli and all the ingredients out over there we have to find out from a population of so many millions and millions of e coli i want to find out who has taken the plasmid of your interest because then only i will be sure right then i will be sure that oh that yes this is the one and i will work on this one so now what happens okay now you are going to see that because okay so once again this is your uh, the color wala plasmid and then normal uh, your e coli is this way okay this is your normal now once again okay what is going to happen see i am going to take this thing and now i am going to put it onto your medium now what is going to happen guys okay so see this is how it is going to appear on your plate you are going to see the situation something like this okay but now guys what you are going to observe that these colonies which have come up on to this thing now some of the colonies they will start showing you colors like this okay so they are going to show you color and now if from a population of this guys if you see only few of them have taken colors can i say that yes these are the ones which have taken up the plasmid these cells have taken the plasmid now guys to rule out everything else what are we going to do we are going to combine these two things okay so what are we going to do we are going to take the medium plus we are going to take the plasmid okay and now because on these both of them they are present antibiotic resistance is also present and the marker gene is also present so now guys what is going to happen when you are going are yaar ampicillin okay and you are going to have ampicillin okay now when you play this thing on your this thing guys what are you going to see you are going to see that oh only three of them they are going to grow out over here like this so see these 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 and now can i say for sure that yes this is the e coli who has taken up the plasmid of interest then what i can do i can take this e coli i can grow it in your medium and then it starts multiplying and as it starts multiplying it starts producing your insulin i can just take the insulin from the medium purify it and then i can just you know work on it and i can distribute it that way that is why we are doing all this stuff this is ha ah, this is exactly like to find out guys who of them has taken up the plasmid that is why we require these two things in fact actually the gene of interest which is out over here guys it is actually located in between the antibiotic resistant gene so there may be two three antibiotic resistant gene and we purposely put it into your antibiotic resistant gene so that we immediately come to know that you know or maybe marker gene or somewhere out over there we easily come to know that oh this gene has been broken or something has gone wrong so we actually find out that e coli anyways so that is a different thing but that is too in detail but for you guys this thing is good enough so but my question to you have you guys understood why are we doing this guys this is done so that we can identify which bacterial cell has taken your plasmid from a population of millions of cells okay everybody all right with this guys guys is everybody okay with this quickly quickly reply guys so that we can move ahead
ओके चलो सो नाउ लेट्स ट्राई टू मूव हेड गाइस एंड लेट्स ट्राई टू सी द नेक्स्ट पार्ट ओके बट नाउ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दीस प्लाज्मिड्स वी नीड टू नो अ फ्यू प्लाज्मिड्स एंड हाउ आर दीस प्लाज्मिड्स जनरली ऑब्टेंड ओके नाउ गाइस ऑलवेज रिमेंबर मोस्ट ऑफ द प्लाज्मिड्स मोस्ट प्लाज्मिड्स दैट वी टॉक अबाउट दे आर आर्टिफिशियली कंस्ट्रक्टेड artificially constructed meaning they are going to be made in your laboratories okay so these are all artificially constructed okay but now let's try to see how is the labeling of your plasmids done okay so let's try to figure this thing out so nomenclature Okay, nomenclature of plasmids. Okay, so first thing, guys, we are going to have the first one, PBR. Ready, ready. So we are going to have PBR three twenty two. Okay, this is like one of the most most uh, important one. Okay, now, guys, this kind of a plasmid, this is done on the you know the name of the discoverer. Okay, so let's try to understand how it is. So this P it actually stands for plasmid. Okay, plasmid of. Okay, B stands for Bolivar. Okay, plasmid of Bolivar. And R stands for Rodriguez. Plasmid of Bolivar and Rodriguez. Okay, and what is this number three twenty two? Three twenty two is the number of plasmid they were working upon. Okay, so this is how this is done. This is based on the names of discoverer. Okay, but now on the other hand, guys, we are going to have another one like your puck nineteen. Okay, so this is on the basis of where it was discovered. So what is puck? Puck is nothing but plasmid of university. U for university. University of and C is for California. Okay, so plasmid of University of California, and lastly, this nineteen. Basically, this is once again the number of plasmid. Okay, how is this done? This is done on the basis of discovery, on the basis of place of discovery. This is what we need to know, guys. okay but now the next thing guys we have to study the structure of pbr322 okay now you don't have it exactly in complete detail but we need to know a few things out over here okay so let me just give you an idea okay so we have this PBR three twenty two. This is the most widely used plasmid ever. Okay, so how is this, guys? So this is going to show you. First of all, this is its entire total size. Okay, but this is not there for you. Four point three six kb kilo base pairs. This is not there for you. But what is this going to show you? See, it shows you few genes for uh, antibiotic resistance. See, ampicillin resistance. we have tetracycline resistance okay these are antibiotics okay and first thing or the first and the foremost thing important that is your origin of replication okay because this has to be there okay but now guys this is going to show you various kinds of your restriction sites this is going to be your pst1 e cora ri hind3 bam h1 and x small 1 this is how it is going to be but guys let me just show you there is another picture which i have got which i are re ye to aadha kadiya 
okay one minute let me just try to fix this yeah I guess this is okay yes so guys see actually what we are looking at is just an overview but see this is the actual map of your PBR322 okay <laughs> So it is going to have several, several, several uh, different types of your uh, restriction uh, sites. All these are enzymes which are going to cut at different places. Okay, tetracycline or ampicillin resistance. Okay, so that way. But however, this is not there for you. This is only for your understanding. Okay, just for the fun of it. But you guys, you just need to know a little bit of this thing. That's it. Okay. Now, the next type of your plasmid that we are going to talk about is your plasmid for uh, your plant infection. Okay, and that is your TI plasmid. So let's try to see what is this TI plasmid going to do? How is it going to be like? What really happens out over there? Okay. So now. Okay, so why are we going to make use of this plasmid, the TI plasmid? Okay, so that if you are working with any kind of plant and you want to transfer some gene from some plant into another plant, then we make use of this TI plasmid. Okay, so plasmid for plants. Okay, so now which is the plasmid i just told you this is going to be the ti plasmid now what is the full name of this ti plasmid it is nothing but your tumor inducing plasmid okay and where are we going to get this thing from this is obtained from a soil bacterium which is agrobacterium tumefaciens okay fine okay but what is this responsible for like i'm saying that you know this is tumor inducing plasmid what is this going to induce what is this going to give you so this is actually responsible for giving crown gall disease okay so this is responsible for crown gall disease in plants okay so what is this crown gall disease okay so guys basically let's say if this this is your normal plant okay and if for any reason this plant is infected by this ti plasmid then what you're going to see that suddenly on the top you are going to see tumor coming out like this and this tumor this is called as your crown gall tumor Okay, this is our crown gall tumor. Okay, fine. But now, guys, we need to see how is this plasmid going to look like and what really happens. So let me just take this. Sorry, Ray. Let me just take this picture and let me just show you how is this plasmid going to be like. Okay. So now, always remember in this ti plasmid okay so this is our ti plasmid it is going to show you various regions okay so this is one vir region then this is the tra region occ okay so all these are different regions but out of this guys what is the one which we want we are going to look for this tdna region okay now why is this tdna important guys tdna is the one which is responsible for inducing the tumor Okay, so this tDNA, this is responsible for disease. Okay, so how are we actually going to use this tDNA? Like, you know, okay, now tDNA is but what will we do? Okay, 
So I'll just give you a very basic idea. Okay. So understand. See, if this plasmid contains the T DNA, if this T DNA is intact, okay, guys, if this T DNA is intact, the plant will show crown gall, right? And if this T DNA, if I break this and I insert my gene of interest out over here, then will the plant show crown gall? No, the plant will no nine 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 nine. This is only for your understanding. Okay, so if I put okay, let's imagine I have taken my gene of interest and instead I have put it out over here in between. Okay, something out over here. Will the T DNA be able to express itself? No, it will not be able to express itself. The reason is because that entire region is going to be broken down. So, will the plant suffer from the disease? No, the plant will not suffer from the disease. Okay, and that is why we use this uh, T DNA. Okay, so let me just explain it out to you what exactly is going to happen. Okay, so let's imagine this is our T DNA. Okay, this is our entire TI plasmid. Okay, what we are going to see right on the top out over here, this is going to be the T DNA. Okay, this is our T DNA. Now, guys, what we are going to do is see, I told you if this T DNA is intact, okay, if this T DNA is intact, then you are going to see that okay, the plant will suffer from crown gall disease. Okay. And now, if I want to introduce my gene, okay, now what I'm going to do, say, I am going to take my gene of interest. And let's say I'm talking about NIF gene. Okay, NIF gene is for nitrogen fixation. Okay, so now guys, what am I going to do is I am going to break this thing in from the center. Okay, meaning like, you know, with the help of restriction endonucleases, I'm going to remove a small part of this thing. And now what am I going to do? I am going to insert my NIF gene out over here. So what you will see is see part of the T DNA is out over here. Part of the T DNA is out over here. And in between, okay, what are we going to see? the gene of our interest. Now we have taken our gene of interest and we have added out over here. This is our NIF gene, which we are adding it. What is NIF gene? This is nitrogen fixation gene. Okay, so in this situation, guys, if you have this kind of a situation will this plasmid will work no so this plasmid does not cause crown gall as the t dna is broken Okay, is everybody getting this thing, guys? Sure, no issues. Okay, had it been the same, this entire T DNA. Okay, so whatever this one was there. Okay, guys, and if this enters into your plant cell, okay, so let's imagine this is a plant cell. Okay, it is going to have its own nucleus and all. Okay, so now let's imagine guys. So we had this T DNA entire thing. Let's say it goes out over here. Okay, something of this sort. Guys, in that case, what will happen? See this T DNA, this is properly intact. Okay, here it was not broken. So you are going to see a situation like this completely full this thing. In this case, guys, what is going to happen? 
the plant is going to show crown gall disease like this okay and if the same thing happens with this you are going to see this plant is going to be free from the disease that is the idea okay everybody getting this thing guys okay and now if by any chance this thing has gone into the plant what is this plant going to show this is going to show you increased nitrogen fixation because we have added the niv gene into it okay but once again the situation is the same guys how are we going to know how are we going to know that in a population of this millions of bacteria who has taken the plasmid and who has not so let's say once again you have this millions of bacteria out over here okay some of them have taken the plasmid some of them haven't taken the plasmid so maybe one which is going to have it okay so let's say this is okay so this is the one which is having this t dna some of them see whenever you're doing these kinds of experiment guys you cannot see with your naked eyes what is happening like you know whether uh, you know the plasmid has been like opened up or whether the plasmid has not been opened up we don't know anything we can't see anything guys okay so that is why we have to follow these kinds of things okay so some of them guys are going to be like this and some of them in this are going to be like this okay now there are two possibilities okay we don't know how it is going to be we take these cells and we are going to put it into your plant cell okay so let's say we have taken this thing are plant cell kya pehle we'll put it into yeah. we are going to put it into your agrobacterium tumefaciens okay so let's imagine we are going to take this thing we put it into your agrobacterium tumefaciens and then he is going to be allowed to uh, infect the plant okay so now let's say this is it is going to have its own dna it is going to have its own dna we are going to take some random things okay and now let's say we have taken this and we have put it into this one Okay, so there are going to be situation. Okay, so ये गया इधर and just a moment, guys. ये थोड़ा सा difficult हो गया diagram. हाँ, okay, and ये गया इधर. Okay, ठीक है. Okay, so now there are two possibilities. Now I'm going to take some of this. I'm going to put it into your Agrobacterium tumefaciens like this. Some of them are going to be this way. Now I can't see with my naked eyes like what exactly is happening. But now when I allow this thing to infect, guys, once again, what are you going to see? If by any chance the T DNA is intact, then what will happen? Immediately, this will suffer from the crown gall disease, and you will immediately come to know that oh, there is a problem out over here. so this one has is taken uh, the gene of our interest no but now on the other side guys on the other hand if for any reason you are not going to see any problem you are going to see a normal plant so if this acts as a normal plant what does this tell you that yes this normal plant has taken the niv gene okay whereas this one has not taken the niv gene rather it has given you crown gall so can i say that this T DNA helps to identify, you know, which plant has taken your gene of interest and which plant has not taken the gene of interest, right? So therefore, guys, we call this T DNA, this T DNA as marker gene. Okay, this acts as a marker gene because it helps you to mark which plant has taken which gene. or which plasmid okay everybody okay with this thing guys fine no problem okay so guys once again what we'll do we'll stop over here for the day
okay and once again in the next class we'll continue with uh, the next part out from here okay uh, but guys once again my suggestion to you remains the same that you know go through this thing today itself one from here and one from uh, your textbook as well okay because in your textbook they have given this in the worst possible manner okay all right Shall so we'll stop over here and we'll see you next class. Till then, take care. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. Bye.